to see you. Let's sing it now, church. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. And I want to see you. And I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Yeah. 
Come on, church, you do it now. Sing it, oh no, you never let go. Through the calm and through the storm, oh no, you never let go. Every high and every low, oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. Lord, you never let go of me. Amen. Yes, Lord. Church, sing it with me. This is my soul.
Yes, we do, Lord. Let's give him praise tonight, church. We love you, Lord. Amen, amen. Good evening, everyone. God is good. Amen. Let's thank the Lord one more time tonight, shall we? So good to see you. The Lord bless you. The good to have each and every one of you tonight. Those that are tuning in live, it's so good to have you as well. Welcome to Calvary Chapel, our midweek service. Good to, good to see everyone. Uh, a lot of things happening. I want to remind everyone that the Heart to Heart Marriage Ministry is meeting this Saturday, uh, 6.30 p.m. in the Koinia Cafe. Uh, all married, our soon-to-be married couples uh, are invited to attend. You can learn more about this ministry. You can please visit the website or email Mario or Rhonda uh, at heart to heart at loveneverfails.com. And also some great news about our seniors ministry, the Grace Connection. For the very first time in over a year, Grace Connection returns to the Koinea Cafe. It'll be this Sunday, 12.30 p.m. It says instead of a traditional potluck, everyone will be responsible to bring their own food or drink uh, or to order something that and have it delivered. Uh, the room will be configured similar to the chapel, it says, a mask up on one side, no mask on the other. They're optional. Uh, for more information, you can email Jeff and Barbara at seniors at loveneverfails.com. And also, just the relaunch is happening with the Kids Church, very first service. I'm so thankful. It all begins uh, Sunday, May 2nd. So it says here, Danielle says, there's a huge need for teachers, helpers to make this happen. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about how you can get involved with the Kids Church and serve our, our children here at Calvary, please email Danielle at Danielle at loveneverfails.com. And as always, the cleaning ministry, they need some help on Thursday evenings, 4 to 6. Uh, you can email Debbie at loveneverfails.com as well. So with all that being said, I want you to turn before we pray tonight in the Bible to Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Uh, I was going to cover 82, 83, and 84, but each one of them is just so wonderful. We're just going to cover nine, uh, eight or nine verses tonight. I believe it's eight verses. Let's look at Psalm 82. Let me read it to you, and then we'll pray. It says that God stands in the congregation of the mighty, and he judges among the gods. And he asks a question, how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and the needy, deliver the poor and needy, Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They shall walk about in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are unstable. I said, you are gods, and all you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, and, and, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations and the church says amen let's go to the lord in prayer father we thank you for these incredible eight verses that come straight from the mouth of lord god you and who the, the god who never lies the god is perfect truth but father tonight as we first of all we lift up stephen carroll for a safe journey to mexico in the morning and Lord God, divine favor with every person that they meet and need to meet. Open up doors as they seek and find your perfect direction, Lord. And again, please keep them safe there and back. But Father, tonight we believe that in the end, that your truth and your justice and your mercy will prevail. And I pray tonight, we pray tonight, Lord, that you would deliver America from feudal hopes and from clinging to such lost causes. I pray that you make your face shine upon our nation and give us peace and give us unity in the midst of the turmoil and the storms that this nation is facing. Thank you for visiting us tonight. Thank you for just manifesting your presence among us. Live, may we feel your embrace and may, with our faith, realize how close you are to each and every one of us. We ask it, we believe it tonight. In Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Amen. Psalm 82, 
I'll tell you, if there has ever been a psalm that is absolutely perfect, not only for tonight, but for today, what we're facing in our nation and so forth, man, it is Psalm 82. Psalm 82 is a cry for justice. Say that with me. A cry for justice. Justice is a beautiful, beautiful word. Now listen carefully. America is disintegrating in a sense, okay? Now don't get off and say, oh, he's going to be negative. I'm, being, I'm teaching God's word, and God's word is always good. Sometimes it doesn't comfort us the way we want to be comforted, though. It makes us uncomfortable, doesn't it? That's right. But America is disintegrating, and to me, it's at warp speed. Now, I say all that because it seems like America has forgotten how to talk to one another. Do you understand? That's why we can use that word disintegrating, because if we don't have proper communication uh, among one another, everything falls apart. Communication is a key in life, in marriage, and so forth. Amen? And especially in our government. The trust in government is at an all-time low. And not only that, the confidence in the news, I don't know who has confidence in the news. I'd rather watch uh, Ren 1010, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't know if you know that or not, Ren 1010, the little boy, he passed away today. Yeah, 77 years of age, you know, all alone, no one with him, and nobody even knew who he was. Isn't that sad? Never mind. It seems that everyone in America, they want justice. But here's the problem. Everyone in America wants justice, but they want justice on their own way. They do not want uh, God's true righteous judgment. Psalm 82, what a fitting word that we have tonight. And this psalm of Asaph, and he's going to paint us a picture, if you will, in these few verses tonight of, of the justice of God. And let me tell you something about God's justice. Today, there's a lot of people saying everybody is getting away with this and getting away with that. I'm going to tell you what, when God judges, when his justice judges, no one is going to get away with anything. Amen? Romans 14, 12 says this. So each of us, not only those that are saved, every person on earth, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Verse 1, Psalm 82, Asaph writes, and he says, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. So God, he is the supreme judge, amen? And he is standing right there in the midst of these assembly, if you will, of judges. And it says he judges among the gods. Now, these are not talking about angels here. God is talking to earthly judges, not just Israel's judges, okay, but also to the judges even today. In other words, God, the people that's in any judicial system, God is the one who placed authority, amen? They are to render verdicts based upon the justice of God, not upon their own feeling. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so tonight as we look at this, look at what God says. He talks to the judges on this earth, Israel and today. He says, how long will you judge unjustly? And, he, and he, we could even say, and how long will you show partiality to the wicked? In other words, the ungodly, those who are not for God, those who are against God. And then Asaph says, Selah. That is a very important thing to, uh, to stop right there. And he's saying, why don't you stop? Why don't you pause and you think about what I just put on, in, on paper? Listen, God is speaking to the judges of Israel, the judges today, and here's what he's saying. He's saying, if you judge unjustly, it is sin and it's a reproach. And if you show partiality to anyone, rich or poor, it's an offense against God. Love one, listen to what Moses writes in Deuteronomy 1.16. He says to the judges, he says, listen, you hear the cases between your brethren and judge righteously between a man and his brother or the stranger who is with him, meaning someone who's outside the camp of Israel. You shall not show partiality in judgment. And you shall hear the small as well as the great, and you shall not be afraid in any man's presence, for the judgment is God's. The, the, the writer of Proverbs, Solomon says in Proverbs 18.5, it is not 
good. Say those words. It is not good to show partiality to the wicked or to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Today, we live in a broken post-Christian society and we, in, a, in our own nation, we seek peace and unity through legislation. But morality will never and cannot ever be legislated. Amen? It's an impossibility. I mean, America wants justice. We're living in a time that I, we're seeing things that we've never seen in our lifetime, a pandemic for one. The things that are occurring in our streets and in our nation, America wants justice. And the, and the way they look at justice is, well, that's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to rename every street. You know what I mean. Okay, well, go ahead and rename. I, I don't like the name of my street anyway. You rename them all, okay? Or they want to rename every army base because it's a Confederate general. Of, I don't know. Okay, well, go rename them. I don't care. You know, they even, you know, what some, uh, poor Jacob, he sent me a text. He, and he's torturing me because he, he, knows, he knows that, you know, I graduated from Keller High School back when there's only one school. There's only 90 students. You know what I'm saying? And we were the Indians. 30. So they must be from Keller. 35,000 people in Keller voted or whatever they did to remove the Indians as the mascot from my high school. <laughs> well, I don't care. What are you going to call it? The sissies? You know what I mean? No, and you can rename all of that. You can rename and remove every statue in our nation. Here's the deal. How many laws does it take for our uh, Congress to pass to stop prejudice? How many? How many, does it, uh, how many laws have, do we have to pass to stop racism, anti-Semitism, and, and bigotry and hatred? You cannot pass enough laws. And you know why? It has nothing to do with the law. It, the heart of man has to be changed. Do you understand? If, you're, if a person is not saved, they're in Adam, and in Adam they're all screwed up. They're all messed up. Do you understand? Their thinking is a, they're a slave. They're a slave to their own lust, to their own prejudice. Man, when you, a person has to be born again. They have to be given a brand new heart. God says in Galatians 3.28, Paul writes, there's neither Jew, there's neither Greek, there's neither slave, there's neither free, there's neither male nor female. Why? For you are all one in Christ Jesus. That's God's justice. God says, I love every one of you equally. I love black. I love white. I love pink. I love brown. I love every color because I created you. He says, man. He says, I have no favorites. God says, you're every son and daughter. You are equal in my sight. Romans 2.11, there is no partiality with God. God is no respecter of persons. Do you remember what James writes about partiality? Let me read it to you from James 2.1. He says, my brethren, speaking of believers, Christians, he says, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, here it comes, with partiality with favoritism. You know, he says, don't do that. For if there should come into your assembly, meaning the synagogue, the church, whatever, a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and they should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing fine clothes and say to him, you sit here. You sit in a good place. You know, and is that really a Rolex? I mean, you know what I mean. Y'all with me tonight? And you sit here in this good place, but you say to the poor man, you stand there or go sit over here at my footstool. I'm going to give you the worst seat in the house. In other words, God says in his word, have you not shown partiality among yourselves? And here it comes. We're talking about judges tonight. We're talking about those that God says you are to judge righteously and not unjustly. He says, James says, have you not become judges with evil thoughts in other words evil thinking judges that judge people with because of partiality partiality is a is a is a deep wickedness loved one listen you know showing favor because of social standing you know or because of wealth you know what i'm saying 
I had a person one time uh, years, many, many years ago, and they would always bring their tithe up to me. And I'm going, I don't look at tithes. I don't want to know who tithes. Please put it in the, the box or deliver it. Don't bring it to me. Well, you know, but it's always open. It's unfolded, and it shows me the amount. Because wa I want to give this here, you know. And, you know, you look at it, and you have $10,000. Well, now, now I'm going to be partial to this guy. I don't want him to leave the church. Yeah, can you got another check? No. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I, that's why I don't like I don't want to know. It, you, only God needs to know. You know, we had a phone call the other day. It came here in the office, you know, and, and Merlinda, this is in her, in her own words that she was telling me all about it, but I'm just trying to remember what she said. Man, this wealthy individual, listen, Merlinda, is, it says here, she picked up the phone and she heard a very countrified voice, she told me, on the other end saying, I want to talk to the head hog at the trough. <laughs> now, that's Texas talk. Do you understand that? You're in Texas. These people in Texas, they talk weird. You know, they're probably from Watauga or something. I don't know. So Merlinda was very puzzled. She said, excuse me, sir. Uh, and he repeated, yeah, I want to talk to the head hog at the trough. Then Merlinda realized the man wanted to talk to Pastor Bill. <laughs> Somewhat indignant, she said, sir, if you want to talk to our pastor, then you'll have to address him properly. You should call him Pastor Bill or, or, or Bill or brother. But you can't certainly cannot uh, certainly refer to my pastor as the head hog at the trough. The, the, other, the man on the end of the line said, you know, using that Texas accent, he said, okay, I just wanted to donate $50,000 to Calvary Chapel. I listen to the head hog on the radio all the time. <laughs> Merlinda promptly replied, said, can you hold, please? <laughs> she said, I think the big pig just walked through the door. <laughs> Now, now, how do you think that made me feel? Now, that's showing partiality, all right? I'm sorry, Merlinda. So what does God tell the judges to do? He says, I want all judges to do justice. Look at verse 3. Here's what you're to do. Defend the poor, the fatherless. Do justice. In other words, don't deny those people just, uh, the, the right to justice. He says, defend the afflicted, the needy, deliver or rescue the poor and needy, free them from the hand of the wicked. Now, that's what judges were supposed to do in Israel's day, and that's what those in authority are supposed to do today. And isn't it wonderful for us to know that that's exactly what our charity, Love Never Fails International, does in Mexico? Amen. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 19, 17, it says, He who has pity upon the poor, it lendeth unto God, and God will pay back what has been given. What a great foundational scripture that is. Isn't it wonderful to know that's what we are doing in Mexico? Isn't it wonderful to know, to, uh, uh, to be in agreement with God? To be, in, you know, uh, to be in agreement, thy will be done on earth, O Lord, as it is in heaven. Amen? Now, verse 5. They do not know, these judges now, they do not know. They don't understand. They walk about in darkness. And look at this next verse or scripture. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. Why are these earthly judges clueless? And why are they walking in darkness? I'll tell you why. 1 Corinthians 2.14 tells us, But the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually concerned. You know what's wrong with our nation right now? And I say this in love. I love our country, okay? Is that, you know what, we have all these people, so many of our people that are trying to guide our nation with human wisdom. And, what does, and that's the spirit of the world. Did you know that? And what does God say about the wisdom of this world? He says it's foolishness. It's foolishness unto God. And the result of all of that, listen to this word that God has for us this, tonight and for a man, kind. He says all the foundations, plural, of the earth, they're unstable. You can't, re you can't uh, rely upon these foundations. You can't even build your life on those foundations because they're all falling apart. 
One of the greatest scriptures in the Bible that David penned is Psalm 11.3. And he said this, if the foundations, plural, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Let me give you another translation from the message. The bottom has dropped out of the country, and good people, they don't have a chance. The Good News translation, there is nothing a good person can do when everything falls apart. Now listen. I respect those great scholars and those incredible translations. I just don't agree. The righteous don't have a chance. There's nothing that they can do. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a minute. Loved one, listen to me. It says foundations was plural. What can we do right now as we witness in our nation one moral foundation after another being destroyed. What are we going to do? We're going to run, hide. We're going to quit praying. We're going to sell the church, the building. You understand? No, listen. No, listen. What can we do if, the, if there's not any more moral absolutes today? See, America has been removing everything, but they've already removed the Word of God. Amen? You see, listen, to remove God's truth, what remains? When you remove God's truth from schools and colleges and universities and even in some Bible colleges, when you remove God's word, God's truth, what remains? Man's truth. That's it. There's nothing nothing else. What's right or wrong will fluctuate with ever the feeling of a man or the human heart, whatever they dictate, anything goes. You know, one of our great expositors wrote about this verse in 1939. He said this. He says, the burning question of our day is if the foundations be restored, what can the righteous do? But loved one, that is a great question for 2021, isn't it? For even what we're going through right now. Because we live in a time when our government and the majority of Americans, they no longer believe in Proverbs 14.34 that righteousness exalts or raises to honor a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Our nation and the majority of people in our nation today, they don't believe the, 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 the Psalm thirty three twelve. blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. See, listen, so many are crying out for justice. Just, oh, you don't, it didn't take long. You just watch the evening news, go upon the, or Google news or whatever, you, and look what's happening. Look what's happening in Seattle. Look what's happening in Minnesota. Look what's happening in California. Look what's happening in America. Look what's happening in our White House. Listen, man, so many want justice, but they want what they think justice is. They don't want God's justice. If the foundations be destroyed, what in the world can we, the righteous, meaning being in right standing with God, what what in the world can we do? Maybe you caught this headline yesterday, April 13, 2021, from the news. It says this, New York parent seeks okay to marry their own adult child. They made a claim before the Manhattan Federal Court. Listen carefully. The parent wants to walk down the aisle in New York City and is asking the judges to declare the laws unconstitutional and unenforceable in their case, which the lawsuit dubs, and is in caps, it says P-A-A-C-N-P. I had never heard that in my life, but here's what it stands for. For parent and adult child non-procreationable couples. This is really in court. It's not even being thrown out of court. Do you understand me? What, what can we do when we see one foundation after another uh, crumble of one? And we have to ask ourselves, why in the world is this happening If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Well, listen, 2008 was a major change in in America, loved one. And it has been descending into darkness ever since. Listen to me. Whenever uh, people are bold enough and uh, uh, brash enough to change and redefine the oldest institution known to man, marriage, there's a major problem. Do you understand? And, you know, and I, when I preached on that in 2008, I, here's what I said. I said, oh, the church is mad, and they're going to, in two weeks later, they're not going to do anything about it, and we didn't. Are you listening to me? No. Loved one, listen to me. 
What can we do if when a, when a Christian lives in a nation or when a nation celebrates what God has condemned? What can we do? I'll tell you what we should expect, and that is a judgment from Almighty God. And I'll tell you why. Because the Bible is very clear. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen? And that is a universal law, and it cannot be changed. It's a universal law from Almighty God. What can we do? I deal with churches all the time. What can we do right tonight, today, when we see so many churches, they have a name, they're alive, but they're dead. And you know what they do? When I see one church after another church side with the laws and the judges and show partiality to the ungodly. Think of that. When churches agree with the new laws of the land and say, okay, if, if same-sex marriage is okay, well, I don't mind marrying people. You know, if man, man, woman, it's okay. Even though they, you know what that means? That means they embrace tolerance and they exalt themselves above the word of God, which is holy. Do you understand? That's where we are right tonight, right this very minute. And we live in a world that is filled and, and is gaining more hate and more prejudice. And, and have you noticed now we're back into the return of the mass shootings? There's so much rage and anger out there. It's in, I've never seen, never have I seen it. And I went through the riots in the 60s, loved one, and I know what I'm talking about. Listen, I thank God that we are a church that every, no matter who, what nation you're from, no matter what color you are, no matter what race you are, it doesn't matter to us. We love you. Amen. That's what makes Calvary Chapel such a wonderful church. There's no prejudice here, and it should never be allowed. Dear God, listen, what are we going to do? You know, I mean, are we going to say, well, Bill, we need to get one of those things on your doorbell, what is it called? Ring, ding or something? <laughs> you know, where you can hear people there and film them. And do we need to get one on the back door, the side door, the window? You know what I'm saying. Do we need to get, finally, let's just put some metal detectors up there. So, you know, if somebody walks in with a, a pistola, a gun or whatever, you know, <laughs> uh, we know it. An alarm goes off. What, or do we just hide, stick our head in the sand or better yet, let's just pull our mask Forget about breathing. Pull it up over our eyes so we don't see anything. Is that what we're going to do? If the foundations be destroyed, if the judges are partial, showing partiality, if they are unjust judges, if there's things that are going on in our land that just breaks our heart, what are we to do? If the, if the foundation be restored, what can the righteous do? I, I have the answer. Continue to be righteous. Continue to serve God. Continue to believe your Bibles. Continue to pray. Continue to stand up for what's right. Amen? That's what is needed right now. And the reason we can do this, Psalm 11, 4, listen carefully. The Lord, it is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. Now listen carefully. His eyes, oh behold, his eyelids test the sons of man. Listen that's faith. Have we forgotten that God rules, that God is sovereign, that history is his story, that God is in control, that his throne is in heaven, and we have the, uh, we have the privilege and honor of going to the throne of grace anytime, 24-7? Oh, loved one, listen, everything that a person does, everything that's happening, they think they're getting away with it in our nation or in the world, they're not going to get away with it. They're not going to get away though. He observes everything that a person does. He sees perfectly every activity of the sons of men, and he misses nothing, and you can hide nothing from God. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the good, keeping watch on the evil. Hebrews 4, 13, there is no creature, literally, or no created person, no created thing, hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Jeremiah 23, 24. Can anyone hide himself in secret places, God says, so that I'll not be able to see him, saith the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and do I not fill earth? Listen to me. 
God is not shocked. It's what's happening in our nation or anywhere upon this planet. You know what we need to do? We must, yes, there are things that are going on. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't know why there's all these things going on, but I'm going to tell you something. God does. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look to him. Amen? I'm going to look to him for everything that I do. Psalm 121, uh, what does it say? Uh, what does it say? Somebody tell me what song. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you. I will lift up my mind to the hills, uh, to, the, to the hills from whence cometh my help. Listen, who made the hills? But God did. I'm going to look unto him. I'm going to keep my eyes on him. I'm going to, looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. Colossians 3, 1. If you were raised with Christ, then seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Not seeking heaven, but seeking the one who's at the right hand of God. That's Jesus, our Savior. The one who has all, all authority, not only in heaven, but upon this earth. Psalm 84, 89, 14, right, listen carefully, righteousness and justice, that's what we're talking about, the cry for justice, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? Man, the foundation of your throne is righteousness and, and perfect justice. It says in verse 6 now, look at it in Psalm 82. The, the psalmist Asaph, he says, God says here, rather, you are gods. Literally, it would be your judges, okay? And all of you are children of the Most High. Therefore, if you are children of the Most High, in other words, be sure that you judge justly, not unjustly and accurately. So the Lord himself, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he quoted verse 6 in John chapter 10. Remember, the Jews were preparing to stone Jesus because he, they said, you're blaspheming because uh, you're a man and you're making yourself out to be God. But he is God, amen? And Jesus said unto them in John 10, 34, he answered and said, is it not written in your law? He's going to quote now this, this uh, psalm that we're in. I said, you are God's. And if, and if God called them gods to whom the word of God came, because Scripture cannot be broken. So Jesus reminds the Jews. He says, you know what? You're the religious rulers and you're the judges. And he uses the word Elohim, okay, in Psalm 82. But he's referring here and calling them gods because they are God's earthly representatives on this planet to do justly and to have mercy. Amen? Matter of fact, I wrote this down in Micah 6, 8. It says, he has shown you, O man, what is good and, and what the Lord, that he requires of you. Here it comes. But for us to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So he says, listen, you guys, then and now, you're to, you're to take care of the, of the needy. Don't show partiality to the rich or the poor. Everyone is equal, God says, in my eyes. He says, protect them. And God says, and here's the deal in verse 7, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So God reminds him, one day you're going to leave this planet and you're going to stand before the only true judge, and that's God. He says, arise, O God, judge the earth. I like that. In other words, come and establish justice on this planet. He says, for you shall inherit all nations. One day, God, through actually our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he's going to judge this world, every person in this world. Loved one, listen, judgment is literally, it will be coming, and justice is coming with it. Amen? That's so good to know. You know, when I see the, the, the horror of some of the children, you know, and, and, and I don't understand all the policies of immigration and this and that, but I, 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 when I see a little boy crying or a little girl crying and they're out there on the road all by themselves and they're weeping, listen, I don't know why they're there or why the circumstances, and I don't care, but I do care about this. There's a heart that's broken, and we as, as a church must care for everyone, amen? And if we don't, there's something wrong. I'm not saying this is right or that's right or this policy. I'm not into that. But I am into people, aren't you? God is into people. Oh, listen. You know, like I said, we're to judge and do things justly for the Lord. But you know what? 
one day this judgment is coming and and you know it can't come soon enough for me but God you know what God's word tells us James says this about the judgment of God he says man you need to be patient I know things are bad I know people are being ripped off he says but you got to be patient let me read it to you from James 5 1 it says James says come now or listen up you rich weep and howl he says and here's the reason for your miseries that are coming upon you in other words God's justice is on the way and the reason is because how they got their money their wealth listen to what it says in James 5 4 indeed the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields who worked in your fields you kept back by fraud you cheated them and not only that they're crying out in the cries of the reapers they've reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath or the Lord of hosts, or the commander of the armies of heaven, the one who is the protector of the poor and the needy and the fatherless. James 5.5. 5. He says, you lived on earth in pleasure. In other words, you, you, you went from pleasure to pleasure to pleasure. He says, and you lived to, for luxury, and you fattened or fed your hearts as in the day of slaughter. And they didn't have a clue that they were doing that. The day of slaughter is speaking of the day that they're headed straight to the slaughterhouse of God's justice, his divine judgment. Verse 6 of James 5, you have condemned, that word means you took the poor, the needy, your workers, you took them to court, you put them before the unjust judge, if you will, you've condemned them and you've murdered the just. They were killing their own workers and he doesn't even resist you. So they use their influence. We're talking about partiality. We're talking about God's justice and man's injustice. They, they use their wealth to influence the courts and the judges to maintain their own lifestyle. It says then in James 5, 7, Therefore, because of what I just read to you, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. You just hold on. God sees. God knows. Not everyone is going to get, they may get away with it here, but they'll never get away with it there. Amen. And he says, you be patient. The judge is coming. And here's what's going to happen. In that day, you talk about justice. You talk about the cry for justice. Every wrong will be made right. Every wrong will be corrected in this entire world. Jesus will make on that day, that day that judgment occurs, everything and everyone will be exposed. The Bible tells us in Acts 17, 30, it says, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now, meaning now that Jesus has come, he commands or God commands all men everywhere to repent. And here's the reason why. Because God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. And that man is the man Christ Jesus. Psalm 96, 13 says, For he is coming. He's coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and his peoples with truth. Now listen to me. There are things that are going to be coming against the church in the years, the, I should say the months and years that lie ahead. There's, there, you know, Christians are not popular now. Did you know that? Now, maybe they're popular, those that teach an easy believism and uh, as they rip, uh, rip you off for your money, okay? But, you know, those that are preaching the truth of God's word and, 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 and doing what God is calling them to do, they're not going to be loved very much, okay? But here's the deal. You know, the thing is, is that God is not going to correct all the wrongs until Jesus comes back. Then everything's going to be made right. Then true justice is going to prevail. Man, I'm going to tell you something. The coming of Jesus, think about this. The coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the second coming. Now, we're going to get out of here the Lord with on the rapture, but we're going to come back with him. And here's what he, Jesus is going to do. He is going to correct what no president, what no government, no philosopher, no moral teacher, no religion. He's going to correct what man could never do. He is going to make all wrongs made right. What only Jesus, only our Lord can do that. 
Moses in his farewell address when, uh, in the, to the second generation of the children of Israel in Deuteronomy. Moses sings this song in Deuteronomy 32, 1, and I'll just give you part of it. He says, oh, give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth. In other words, he's calling them to be the, his witness. He says, the words that's coming out of my mouth, let my teaching drop as rain, my speech distill uh, as dew. Rain drops on the tender herb and showers on the grass. And here, here's why. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. And here's the reason. For he is the rock. Amen. Listen, he is the only stable foundation in the universe. Amen. And guess what? He's our rock. Amen. Everything may fall apart, but when it's all over and everything, the judgment, when all the dust settles, guess who's going to remain standing? Jesus and those who are with him. Amen. Yeah, we win, okay? No, he says, oh, he is the rock. His work is perfect, not a single flaw. And listen to what he says. I love this. Moses sings and he says, for all his ways, all of God's ways is justice. Isn't that beautiful to know that? Everything that God does is perfectly good and perfectly fair. He's a God of truth, and he is without injustice, and righteous and upright is he, meaning he does no wrong. God is our rock. Jesus is our rock. Amen. Loved one, listen to the psalmist 33, 4. He writes, oh, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. And here it comes. He, meaning God, he loves righteousness he loves justice the earth is full or literally the earth is uh, drenched of the goodness of the Lord we are living in times where most of us have stopped looking at the news listening to the news we want to and I don't blame you I have too. sometimes but loved one listen to me I want that to be, God wants that to be our confession tonight, that the earth where we live is drenched with the goodness of God. Oh, that's, that's what we need to be, not man's goodness. No, there's, no, there's none that doeth good. God doeth good continually, amen? And I say, oh, Lord, I don't want to listen to man because they're going to tell me the opposite. I only want to listen to you. I want to keep my eyes on the good things of God, and I want to look for the goodness of God in this world. Amen? I want to see what God is doing. And for us to see that this world is drenched with the goodness of God means that we have to be actively looking for His goodness. Amen? And we have to be a part of His goodness. We have to uh, be good to other people and tenderhearted to other people and help other people. That's, that's what it's all about. Listen, our nation... You know what we, this nation needs to do? They need to get on their knees right now, and they need to turn to the one who loves justice because they're seeking their own justice, and only God knows what true justice is. Amen? And I say, oh, Lord, listen, you talk about an injustice. No one that has ever lived has suffered the injustice done to our Savior Jesus Christ. You talk about the courts. You talk about unfair judges. How about when he was sent to, 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 to Herod and, 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 and then to the or to high priest, then to Herod, and then the Pontius Pilate? I mean, you talk about a kangaroo court. They brought in people that would lie uh, about him and so forth. Are you talking about suffering and injustice? And then they put him on a tree. They crucified him, and he died as you and for you as and for me. Amen. You think about the injustice he went. What did Jesus say? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Had they done that to me, okay, had they beat me like that, had they put that cloth and blindfolded me and those Roman soldiers started beating my face and say, prophesy unto us if you be the king of kings or whatever, tell me, who hit you with that fist? Or when they started plucking out my beard or they ripped my back to pieces or they started spitting in my face, all those things, if they'd done that to me, and they put me on that cross, and I died, and I came back to life. You think I would be, what did Jesus say? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. I would say, where are they? Because I want to kill them. Do you understand me? 
Huh? Come on. But see, not Jesus. The injustice done to him, he did, he died for us that we might experience his true justice. You know, I tell you, we're the most favored, chosen people on this planet. Think about that for a moment. Do you pray for our nation? Do you pr pray for the president? doesn't mean you like Biden or maybe you do like him. That's not even the point. We're commanded to pray for all those in authority, whether they're a Democrat or Republican or a moron. Do you understand me? We're to pray for them. You know, we need to pray for this nation. We need to pray for the people. Amen? We need to get on fire for the Lord. Father, I thank you tonight in Jesus' name for this great psalm. Oh, how I enjoyed this psalm, Lord. I enjoyed it. And Lord, I tell you, I know if the foundations, they are being destroyed one by one by one by one. But Lord God, you know what? They can change names. They can change streets. It's not going to change one thing. But you know what? Your name never changes. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, Lord, we need a revival in this nation. We need your love poured out upon this country. We need to be saturated. Every person, every color, every, everybody saturated in your love. Oh, Lord, move one more time. Let the heavens be opened. Pour out the latter rain of your love upon us. Let us have a, the, if it's the last revival, then let it be, but let us have one more. And let us see the great harvest that you will bring in. We love you tonight. We pray over this country again, Lord. Help us. Help us. In the greatest name in the universe, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. And the church says, amen and amen. Let's stand to our feet tonight. God is good. Amen. I'm going to go home and I'm going to eat the coldest piece of fried chicken. <laughs> That's right. I can't wait, man. I'm, I'm ready. You know, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm on drugs. I didn't even, I didn't even take Sudafed tonight, man. You, so you see what happens when you don't have any allergies? I mean, you just feel you have all that energy, you know. I don't know. Praise God. I'm allergy free tonight. And I just, you know, man, I could pick up the guitar. We could start moving around. Yeah. <laughs> Pray for our nation. Pray. Pray. Be good to people. Everyone. Everyone. God is good. Let's sing to the Lord. If you need prayer when the song is over, you know to come down. Be people here to pray with you. And I pray you have a great week. I pray that you go home and you reread these few eight verses. Amen. Let them get into your heart. Let's sing to the Lord. God is so good. Yes, you are. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. He's so good to me. Yes, you are. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you in Jesus' name. Greet each other as you depart tonight. God bless you guys.